Welcome to the energy update for the new moon in Virgo. The timeline that we're working on is September 17th to October 15th, 2020. Welcome to the weekly energy update. This is where we take a look at the cosmos, find out where the sun, the moon, the planets, the stars are, and we find out what's the message, what's the uh, alignments that we can merge with. So if you like this video, definitely subscribe to the Lunar Ladies channel where we have weekly energy updates happening. And feel free to share this video if it resonates with you, with family and friends. So let's get started. The new moon in Virgo, what is that? That's known as the maiden's moon or maybe even closer to the idea of the virgin's moon. Now when I speak of virgin, I'm talking to you about it in the goddess sense, meaning that this is a purified form of the feminine energy. And when we look at the original meaning of virgin, it's woman whole unto herself. And that leads us into the frequency of Virgo, which is body, mind, spirit, wellness, and wholeness. So we're looking at multiple dimensions of our existence from physical wellness, mental wellness, emotional wellness, and spiritual wellness. Now, how does Virgo pull all that together? Well, she's very good at developing daily habits, simple routines that you can do over and over and over and over. And what this does is, in essence, it organizes chaos. <laughs> so Virgo is an earth sign mutable, meaning it changes, it flows, it's adaptable, it's flexible. And its polar opposite sign, dance partner, is Pisces. And that is kind of this free flowing dynamic universe that's just you know, creating itself over and over, expansive and limited. And so in the earth physical world, Virgo takes that soul transcendent energy of Pisces and wants to organize it. But in out in the cosmos, it needs to be free. It needs to be kind of in this uh, state of dynamic energy meaning it's not planned, it's in the field of all possibilities. And so we're working with that access this lunar cycle for the 2020 version of the Virgo lunar energy. And so when we work with the lunar cycle, what we're doing is we're working with our core root self. And in astrology, there's three layers of self that when we kind of want to define who we are, we look to our rising sign, our outer layer, that's what people uh, see in us first. It's like the first impression energy. And they're there to unconsciously draw that energy out so we can emerge through that space, our outer layer. And the second layer is your sun's energy. And the sun is when the, the day of the, of the year that we were born, where was the sun in the cosmos? So we say, I'm a Virgo, I'm a Cancer, I'm a Leo. That means your sun was traveling through that constellation at the time of your birth. And that's your middle layer. That's more the personality, how you identify with yourself, how you, you know, forms your characteristics and your traits. Whereas the rising sign defines the physical characteristics of what you're emerging as through the physical form. And then the third part of self, the inner core most root layer is the moon sign. So it's good to know your rising sign, your sun sign, and your moon sign. And you bring those together to identify who you are in this lifetime. So the moon or lunar energy is that core self, that maternal inside instinctive nature that, know, that needs to be bonded with and nurtured by. So it's good to know all those layers of yourself. Now, when we live with the lunar cycle, what we're doing is we're doing the cycle of rebirth and uh, personal development. And it has the, you know, the stages of growth that we find in nature, from a new moon to the seed that then sprouts and then breaks through the soil, grows towards the sun, bears fruit, then falls away, decays back into the earth, where that, that uh, cycle starts again to reseed itself and then do it again. So we look to this type of energetic cycle and we uh, put ourselves in that rhythm and that timing and we can personally develop and actually accelerate our personal development when we live in, that, uh, in harmony with that rhythm and that nature. And so for women, it's very, very important to live in that pattern and cycle because it mimics our internal world, right? It mimics like our uh, reproductive cycle from if we're menstruating, we have that same cycle happening within us. Now, it happens both for men and women, everyone on the planet, because we're in a, a biorhythmic 
energy where we're you know relating to the light on the planet that comes from the sun we're relating to the darkness at night that comes from a moonless night and there's just stars so we have a biorhythmic field that our physical body is also in tune with that is in direct mirror relationship to this lunar cycle vibration to the seasonal changes to this life cycle of a seed it's all happening it's like a fractal within a fractal within a fractal okay so that's the lunar lesson 101 now here we are the beginning of a new cycle the, and i call it the new moon some refer to it as the dark moon and this is when the sun and the moon align together conjunct same degree in the sky and when that happens it starts a new cycle right so here we have september 17th 4 a.m on california time at 25 degrees virgo that starts this new cycle so that we take that moment september 17th and we see when will the sun and moon align again and that will be october 16th for the new moon in libra so we have that timeline in which to create manifest destroy get through obstacles uh, break through limits and then bring ourselves to fruition and then finally release it all celebrate it and let it go and then coming back to the inward phase okay so with all that in mind where are we going where in the cosmos are we? I always like to say, what time is it? And I look at the sun and the moon and I know what time it is in the cosmos. So the time is the new moon in Virgo and it's the maiden's moon, the virginal moon. It means the really the wholeness type of moon. So you're gonna be working on your wholeness, body, mind, spirit, wholeness, and how do they integrate together as a multidimensional uh, experience of reality. Now remember, Neptune is opposite the sun and moon in Virgo, Neptune is in its home sign of Pisces. And so we're remembering that we're in this world, but not of this world. Our soul is more part of the cosmic fabric of creation. And we have an aspect of soul coming into, into human form, physical form, that is having this experience. And so we want to be able to integrate both those aspects of ourself where we're not leaving one out, where we're just like, oh, I'm in a human body, I'm a human being, and that's it. Well, there's more to the story than that. <laughs> You're also a soul having a human experience and it's very temporary and you've had multiple experiences, multiple lifetimes, and it's all stored in your unconscious or even your, uh, some people like to go to the Akasha, to the records of all these lifetimes. Okay, so at the timing of the new moon, the, the sun will not have risen above the eastern horizon in, in, on the west coast. So it's happening at 4 a.m., 7 a.m. on the eastern, uh, east coast. But before here in the west coast, what rises over the eastern horizon line is Venus, Venus in Virgo. And so I really, or Venus in Leo. And I really love that because at 4 a.m., if you're awake and you want to celebrate the moment of the sun and moon coming together at 25 degrees Virgo, what happens is you can look to the east and see Venus rising and blessing your experience. And Venus is the symbol, the archetype of the divine feminine. Uh, in our consciousness in this reality now. So there she is in Leo, the beautiful queen in the morning star, blessing your uh, experience, saying hello to you and saying, let me be a part of your setting your intentions and putting energy and, and desire and wishes into motion. Now we have the lunar cycle that's 29 and a half days, but we also have a, uh, a bigger cycle of six months when the new moon in Virgo becomes the full moon in Virgo six months from September 17th. And so we can really manifest bigger uh, goals or bigger changes. Now Virgo says, be focused on your sixth house of, of your field of your sixth house in your natal chart because uh, that's the house that Virgo normally rules. And so we looked at the sixth house to find out more and to understand more about Virgo's energy. It's, its mantra is, I serve, I analyze, I organize, right? And so we're looking at body, mind, spirit, wellness, an integrative approach to uh, your entire or you know, whole well-being. And so look to your, your physical, food. Where's your food come from? Now Virgo says, make sure you're eating food that's comes right from the dirt, right? Let's do whole foods that are not processed, macronutrients, right? So get in that green energy, get in that, that um, organic, uh, you know, non-processed, like grab that apple from the tree and really enjoy it, right? And make it simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Virgo loves simple, efficient, uh, and more of that kind of frugal nature, like less is more. 
And then we move into our emotional body. Like how are we cleansing our emotional body? Are we expressing how we feel? Uh, but Virgo is ruled by Mercury, so she tends to go a little bit more on the logical mental side to analyze and organize feelings. So we want to be able to really pay attention to are we thinking about how we feel or are we really kind of allowing ourselves to have this emotional experience. But Virgo says, look at the, the thought emotion connection. Are your thoughts creating your emotions, right? And feelings are different from emotions. Emotions are kind of responses to thoughts or memories, past, present, future. The feelings are in the moment, actually having a visceral experience of getting the information inside and outside the body. And so if you look, if you're more a reactive person, you want to look at your thoughts. What types of emotional reactions are these thoughts generating? And so Virgo says, clean it up, get into the corners and really let your mind be free of clutter. So great intention to set is to free your mind of clutter. Free your, free your rooms, your house, get rid of stuff. Do a Marie Kondo, like, does it make you happy? If not, out of here, right? So less is more, clean space, let, and that allows the energy to move. It lifts up your spirits and keep your environment clean and clear, right? Inside and outside. And then how they work is that starts to feed into the, each of the layers of self, physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual. All right, so we have Venus blessing us, appearing as the morning star in this early morning new moon, uh, a conjunction of the sun and moon. Now, 25 degrees Virgo, uh, the Sabian symbol is a, a boy with a censer, uh, you know, serving a priest at the altar. And so I myself grew up in a Catholic household, Catholic school experience. So that was like really easy for me to imagine. <laughs> I was so bummed when I realized I couldn't be an altar boy. I'm like, come on, that's not fair. But now the girls can be altar boys. <laughs> so they're altar girls. But anyway, so this brought into the, uh, the vibration of Virgo that's in service to the divine. Now, the boy with the sensor is a symbol of our, um, our part of self that's learning how to serve, more that innocent, youthful heart. And the priest is representing more of this, you know, kind of, uh, you know, a uh, master or a uh, person who's already gone through initiation and, uh, you know, is at a different level of service, right? So, and how is those two parts of self interacting together? And so when I look at the Sabian symbol, I'm like, oh, okay, this is about divine sacred service. And so when you listen to the podcast, this for the new moon, I talk about what is it it to be in sacred service to divine. What does that really mean? Because Virgo has a really bad habit of putting everybody else's needs before her or his own, and uh, then they're in a weakened state. So to truly be in divine service, you have to serve oneself, your inner I am first. So it's, it's the same thing as if you're on an airplane, you put your oxygen mask on first before you help the person next to you, right? So you have to be serving from a cup that's full and overflowing and the overflow the divine working through you is the service that goes out so in the podcast i talk about three steps to being in divine service so definitely check out the podcast listen to it go for a walk out in nature and you know you'll be getting you uh, helping your physical body you'll be getting your mind uh open and cleansed and clear you'll get some emotional um help and release there and then your spirit will be very happy so listen to episode the new moon episode 16 as it comes out for the new moon go for a walk out in nature while you're doing that or you might be cleaning and washing the dishes either way you're going to make virgo very happy so i'm going to go ahead and share my screen for this energy update and i want to refer to you to the blog post because every week i write a blog post it's chock full of information so i'm going to go through the blog post just quickly so you can see what's there when you have a moment go back and, and really read the blog post. There's lots of uh, information and tools there that you can, uh, that will assist you in your uh, experience of setting into motion intentions for this new lunar cycle. And so when I cast a chart uh, for the new moon and I read it as if the moon is my client, she's such a good client. She shows up every week. <laughs> and uh, the, the chart is about purifying your power with the new moon. 
And so I talk about the new moon and the sun in Virgo, what that means, Mercury, the ruler of Virgo, what's he doing at the time of the new moon? He's 70 degrees Libra. He'll be going retrograde towards the end of this lunar cycle on October 13th, so prepare for a Mercury retrograde. Mars in Aries is already in retrograde, so already in a process of purification. So there's lots of purifying energy happening. Now, when Venus, as I mentioned earlier, appears as the morning star in the east, she's at 12 degrees Leo, which 12 degrees is a starseed marking of the healer. And Pallas Athena is also at 12 degrees in the sign of Capricorn, and together their relationship is in a 150 degree angle, which is called a yod. And that's a spiritual finger of God, like a light in the chart. And so you need to make a spiritual connection to your inner feminine uh, queen, Leo lover energy to Pallas Athena and Capricorn, wisdom. So wisdom reigns during this lunar cycle. So read more about that. But in the, uh, the chart for the new moon, there's a trapezoid. And I really like to focus in on the trapezoid uh, dynamic in a chart. It's a very old, ancient um, uh, energy that's, that can show up in charts. It's not that uh, common. It's pretty much rare. And I have a few clients, including myself, that have a trapezoid. And, and when I look at that energy, uh, I intuitively know that that's a, a snare. It's a trap for light workers. And so, but there's a way out. <laughs> I know the way out. The trick to uh, uh, releasing oneself from a trapezoid, because it's an old kind of ancient place uh, with, you know, in ancient times, they use that as kind of a, a trapping of souls. But there's a way out, and it's in the double uh, yod. So you have to understand the corners and how to make relationships between the points of the trapezoid. There's four points. They relate opposing angles to one another, and that's the way out of the, of the light worker snare. And so when you go to the website, you'll learn about those points. And, and the first point is the sun and moon, right? The sun and moon um, coming in to... Um, to the Mars and Lilith. So we've got to understand that relationship. And the other one is the North Node and Gemini to Saturn retrograde. And so take a look at that. And if you need help, you can always do a one-to-one -one reading with me, or you can join me in my inner circle where I do group coaching about your chart in harmony and joy with other women who are using their natal astrology charts on a daily basis to learn about themselves and to shift and change their life in an accelerated way. So the next part of the uh, blog post is I break down the lunar phase. So I break down the new moon in Virgo. Here's the symbol so you can find it in your chart. What house does rule, uh, Virgo rule for you? Here's the lovely maiden's moon. Isn't she pretty? And I talk about what that means uh, in relationship to oneself. And the new moon and sun are passing through the 14th lunar mansion known as the scepter. So this is, I want you to really tune into the magician's card and how one creates and manifests. And what is your wand? You're going to learn about what your wand is and how to use the power of discernment. And finally, I include the human design gateway for 25 degrees Virgo. It's in gateway number six called friction. So you're going to really be tuning into what rubs you the wrong way because this will create an accelerated force of energy that you can use to bust through blocks and barriers. And then finally, the Sabian symbol, a boy with a sensor serves a priest at the altar. And that's what's appearing in the psyche of humanity at this degree as we move into a new cycle. So you can learn more about what that means, uh, the hidden meaning to, to that sacred symbol. And so when you go, to the end of the blog post, I really tune it up with some um, very interesting information, four bullet points to pay attention to. And the first one is tune into your instincts, that everything around you is alive and has purpose. So when you do that, while the lunar cycle is happening, the frequency of Virgo, what you're doing is aligning to a bigger energetic field that's going to help you. <laughs> it's going to help you. And one of my favorite sayings is, one with God is a majority. So just align with some divine energetics that are available for you at this time. And what happens is when you merge with that higher power, then other you, you get to access to more and more um, ease, grace, and flow. 
The second bullet point is lack and difficulty can lead you into deeper understandings of all that you really have, right? So when we sit with lack or, or feeling like we have less than, especially in 2020, it's a tough and rough year. And, but let, if you have this happening in your life, let yourself just be with that because you want to get to the deeper understanding of it. And then it helps you kind of move through that lack into realizing what you already have. And then you want to focus on what you have instead of focusing on what you don't have. The third bullet point is free yourself of the heaviness of the past, especially oppressive memories. This is how you heal this lunar cycle. And believe me, there's lots of oppression oppressive energy out there, but you want to free yourself of it because that's where the healing is. And then finally, when you clear, when you clearly as assess, right? Because Virgo is like calculating, looking, 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 analyzing. So when you give that Virgo energy a chance to clearly assess what you have, you go beyond the satisfaction of merely owning things, but you can restore your sense of fulfillment uh, with what you already have, which brings in a very a uh, more empowered state for you to show up for yourself in your world with your friends and family and your experience here on planet earth so that's your energy update for the new moon in virgo set your intentions and if you need help definitely come over to club.lunarladies.com it's a free mighty network where we just break down and discuss living with the lunar cycles and how we can use that to help us in our personal daily lives and virgo loves what we're doing in the lunar ladies club because it's simple it's a routine, it creates really healthy habits, and it brings into a heightened state of awareness. Now, you can join us in the club.lunarladies.com, the free community, but if you really wanna dive in deep, learn the language of astrology, learn the power and the mystery of your natal chart, and put that into action in your life, that's when you can come into the inner circle, and it's a monthly paid premium program set at a very good price that's affordable, right? And it's a good investment for yourself because, uh, It'll help accelerate what you're already doing when you come into a, a bigger frequency of awareness and knowledge that's more in harmony, especially if you're a woman, in harmony with your physical molecular uh, structure. <laughs> it's a rhythm that your body just already knows how to follow. So it's returning really to uh, your more empowered state and utilizing the power of your intuition and your feeling in the toroidal field of your heart that makes life a lot easier and way more exciting to live. So thank you for watching this week's energy update. Come back next week for the first quarter moon in, uh, where are we going? Capricorn. So it's going to be really good. So I'm very excited to see you next week for the energy update. Make sure you check out this uh, New Moon's Lunar Podcast in WTF, What the Frequency. See you then.